Hi guys, my name is Marcel, and today you're not going to learn how to draw. <laughs> like a <sir. laughs> Because today's gonna be a special video. I'll be showing you all of my art supplies. From paper, to pencils, to colors, to everything else I possess. But the most important thing, I'm going to explain to you guys what everything does. It's not just going to be a boring list, but also an explanation on what everything does and why I'm using it. Because I get asked a lot, what's this for? What's that for? Why are you using that? And so on. And now you don't have to Google it, because here's a video that explains everything. In detail. You lazy f- by the way, at the end of this video, I'll be adding up how much all of my art supplies are worth right now and how much money I spent on this. And honestly, I'm a bit scared of that part. <laughs> also, in case you can't find a specific art supply I'm using, I listed all of my art supplies on my website, drawlikeasir.com. So you can specifically find the same pen, a paper or whatever you're looking for. Even my camera, my microphone, everything's there. So you can please stop asking where I bought everything from. I do want to stress though, these art supplies are something I collected over the last two decades of my life. You might think that you just need to spend a lot of money on art in order to get good. But that's not true. Actually, most of the time, I just like to use some plain old pencil and some plain old sketchbook and just scribble down some sketch that I'm in the mood for. So please do not get discouraged. That's the last thing I want to achieve with this video. Also, usually in my videos I like to do a lot of animation. You guys are aware of that, but I rarely ever get to film stuff. And I do like filmmaking a lot, not just the editing part. And I wanted to make a video where I finally get to film a lot. And the last thing I wanted to say, uh, none of this is sponsored. Nobody told me to hold anything into the camera. Nobody gave me money. But if you want to give me money though- Okay, yeah, yeah, alright, I'm getting started already. I think what you're most interested in are my pens, so let's take a look at them first. I think the most important thing is my mechanical pencil. I really like to use traditional pencils made of wood, but when it comes to drawing small details and architecture, I just need something very precise. And especially when drawing manga pages, you need to draw both of those things a lot, so that's why I mostly switch to this mechanical pencil. I do have a couple of spare pencils, just in case I'd lose this one, and to be honest, I really don't think you need the exact same one. I think it's more about the artist and the art supply, but in case you just want to have more details what size or brand my pens have, well, like I said, I've linked my art supplies on my website, just in case you want to read into it. When it comes to erasers, I basically only use this one from Tombow. Maybe you've already seen them in some manga illustrations, they are very popular in Japan. And there's a reason behind it. See, I've always hated erasers as a kid because they always smudged my artworks. But these erasers are so reliable, especially the black dust catcher one that doesn't leave behind any rubber dust. At the end of the day though, that's just a luxury. Like I said, you can use anything to make great art with, but I just like these quality of life features a lot. They make things a bit easier sometimes. Speaking of erasers, this pen is a fusion of a pencil and an eraser. And this one was also immensely helpful when it came to drawing manga. Erasing small details or faces can be a huge pain. I used to have a rectangular one, but I do not recommend buying it because this thing is more fragile than my ego. I just got the round version instead. It works just as good and although it cannot fix my ego, it's refillable. So yeah, there's that. I basically only use ink from Delita. I'm using it to ink almost everything. Manga pages, shikishi and a lot more. I'm using ink for over 6 years now, so I think I started using it when I drew the second volume of my manga series. Maybe you spotted the difference while reading it. The ink that I have isn't waterproof though, so I'm not using it for my watercolor artworks. Instead, I'm using liners for that. But in case you want to know how you're applying ink, well, I'm applying ink with with these babies right here. They are called Maru Pen, Tama Pen and G Pen. And with these I inked over 700 manga pages by now. When you're not drawing manga, you're not really gonna need the Tama Pen one. 
the G Pen one probably is the one that's the most popular, but my favorite is the Madu Pen. And just because it's so precise, more precise than any liner out there could ever be. So yeah, these pen nibs are absolutely amazing, but that's why they are just as expensive. By the way, they don't last forever. Far from it, in fact. They are getting dull very fast, actually. So you really need a lot of them in order to finish a whole manga volume. And in case you want to know more on the topic of inking, I've also made a video recently. Just take a look if you want. I also collected different nib holders over time, but of course my favorite's the Tachikawa one. Like I said, I have several one of them somewhere. Presents, uh, some I inherited from my family, but yeah, the Tachikawa is the one you see at the desk of very famous mangaka. And they are compatible with basically any nib out there, it doesn't matter if the nibs come from Japan or if they're western ones. For everything else, I'm using these liners. They are cheap, I know, but like I said, the price doesn't have to be a factor in quality. I'm using these a lot when I'm drawing commissions at conventions and, of course, for my watercolor artworks as well. Yes, for that I could just get some waterproof ink, but the watercolors I'm using are so vibrant you barely see the lines anyway after coloring. So yeah, nobody's gonna notice the difference anyway, so that's why I'm sticking to these liners. Can't recommend them enough. Copic does have colored liners in red, blue, sepia and so on, and I sometimes use them when I'm coloring something monochromatic, like with this Charizard artwork I've painted last year. But when looking at it now, I barely notice the colored line, but drawing a whole picture with colored lines might be looking a bit better. So, to be honest, yeah, I'm not really using them anymore. This drawing pen is my last supply when it comes to inking. It's a bit confusing because it's not a replacement for ink, it's more of a fine liner that looks like it has a pen. There are ones you can refill and some you can't refill, so yeah, it's basically just a very pricey liner. So yeah, safe to say I'm not really using this one. Maybe you already saw me in live streams how I'm copying my artworks from one sheet of paper to another. And this is how I'm doing that, with a lighting table. You don't need one. I'm always saying you only really need a window and some stamina on your arm. But yeah, using a lighting table is a thousand times more comfortable. And since I'm only drawing at night when I come home from my job, I don't really have any more sunlight I could use for that. So yeah, safe to say I really need this one. I'd used a couple of gel pens by now, but this one's my favorite. They are pretty cool for drawing in highlights and stuff, but I don't use them for correcting mistakes anymore. When it comes to correcting artworks, I'm using something different. Maybe you've heard of gouache before, it's actually a whole medium for itself. I'm actually not painting with gouache though, I only ever use it for correcting mistakes or making some effects when I want to paint. The only thing that's a bit annoying is that you're only able to apply it with a brush, but since it works so good, that's totally worth it. Speaking of brushes, these are the ones that I'm using at the moment. There are some really expensive ones out there, but these ones are like dirt cheap. I'm actually quite happy with these, even though they are cheap, I painted every single artwork with them so far. It doesn't matter if it was a portrait, a landscape or anime. I don't know if I'll be trying out some pricier ones soon, but when I do, I'll be sure to add them to my list on my website as well. And these are the watercolors I'm using. They also aren't the super expensive one, they cost like... 20 bucks or something. I painted a lot of artworks with them already and not a single color is empty so far. The only thing I purchased extra was this gold color, but I just used it for one single artwork so far. I noticed that when I printed my artworks into my artbook, you can't really see the gold color anymore, so that's why I just stopped using it altogether. Anyways, the colors are really important and have a nice pigmentation. It contains every color you'd need and, in case you would want to get into painting with watercolor yourself, I've uploaded a 20 minute crash course on how to use them. You know, just in case you don't know anything about painting with watercolors yet. I'm pretty sure you know these colored pencils already, these are the infamous polychromos from Faber-Castell. I've been using them for years now in basically any style I wanted to. And they often saved my ass when I wanted to get in some extra details, but they are damn expensive, I'll tell you that. 
There are different sets of them though, there are some cheaper ones and some pricier ones. I've bought an expensive one back in the day because there are instances when I'm like, dude, I would need this specific color right now for this artwork. And in these situations, I'm really glad I saved up my money so I could buy the bigger one that I have more of a choice in colors. And also when I'm buying something expensive, I make sure it at least lasts a couple of years. And I'm happy to confirm this has been the case here. Yeah, Copic markers need no introduction. I've been using them for the longest time now. At this very moment, I possess 120 Copic markers and 35 refills. And when considering one marker costs like five to seven bucks and the refills at 15 to 20 bucks, yeah, I think most of the money I put into my art supplies <laughs> was spent on these. For this kind of money, you could get more watercolors or colored pencils than you would ever need in your life. I would never spend so much money on Copic markers again. There are cheaper markers out there that work just as well. Regardless, I think I would never put so much money into one medium that I don't even really like that much. Like I said, I barely ever use Copic markers anymore. Granted, some of these markers were gifted to me, some of them were presents, but the most of them I bought with my own money. Oh, and since people were asking, I didn't buy this shelf. It's actually completely self-made, which is why there is no link to it on my website. Actually, my dad helped me building this whole thing, which I'm so grateful for because my craftsmanship is sometimes even worse than my puns. The last colors I owe are acrylic colors. I started painting small with those by painting trading cards, and then I continued with Playstations, anime figurines, and at last, a whole damn PC. <laughs> the cheap colors were fine when it came to like smaller motifs, but since the PC I painted was commissioned by Amazon, I really wanted to make this the best artwork I could possibly make, and that's why I bought some more expensive colors for that. There is a difference in vibrancy when you put them side by side. I think the budget color version also works pretty good though. At least I was pretty happy with it in the beginning. This is something people won't stop asking about. When I'm on stream, what are these weird stickers? When I'm making Instagram stories, what are these weird dots on your manga pages? This, my dear friends, is called screen tone. It's a sort of self-adhesive foil or film that you're putting onto your finished artwork. I'm by far not the only one who's using that. That's also something you see a lot in famous manga, like in My Hero Academia or in Bleach. But yeah, many people insert screen tones digitally because screen tone is so expensive. You can actually see me keeping even the smallest snippets because of that. You definitely don't want to waste even a shred of screen tone. My last video about making manga didn't really do that well, which is why I'm not sure if I'll ever make a tutorial on screen tones, but I guess only time will tell. Maybe you've seen me using this brush pen before. I used it to paint sound effects in manga so that they look very traditional. Just imagine it as your run-of-the-mill refillable pen, but just with a brush tip at the end. And you can mainly use it for, you know, drawing brush effects if you're into that. I know, some of you waited for me to finally mention this one. That's also something people constantly ask about. This, my dear friends, is a masking marker. And it's incredibly useful when working with watercolors. You can use it in order to prevent certain areas from getting wet. Insert sex joke here. I'm using it a lot actually, though I would not recommend using it when you're still a beginner. Now, one last entry in this category. Many people are asking if I'm painting the borders of my shikishi boards with golden watercolor. And the answer is no, I don't. I'm using these special markers for this. They are dang expensive, but since I'm painting these boards for my subscribers to win at my convention booths, I want them to look fancy. And to me, that's worth the money. Now, those were all the pens and colors that I'm using. Let's hop over to my digital supplies. It's not gonna take very long, I promise. I've tried a lot of tablets out there, but this is my absolute favorite one, the Huion Canvas 16. I've used bigger tablets, smaller tablets, but this size is just 
perfect to me. It's not too big so that my shoulder starts aching, it has a screen, it has a pen that you don't need to charge, and enough buttons for shortcuts. I've been using it for years now and I can't imagine switching to anything else. I also have a mobile tablet, but I'm really not a fan of drawing digitally on the go. I also just don't like the smaller screen, so because of all of that, I just barely ever use it. It works pretty good, apps are running smoothly and the price is pretty affordable, but I just prefer my main tablet in any way there is. I can see myself switching to the new Microsoft Surface, I tested it out once and I really like it. But I'm not yet ready to sell my kidney in order to buy that one, which is why I'm still saving up. Once I replace my old tablet with this one, I'll make sure to add it to my supply list on my website. When it comes to apps, I use Clip Studio 90% of the times. So there are cases where I prefer Photoshop, for example when making the cover for my art book. This artwork was an absolute beast to draw, so I needed some features that Clip Studio didn't have. But yeah, doesn't matter if I paint portraits or anything else, I basically paint everything in Clip Studio. I cannot see myself making videos on digital drawings yet, by the way, maybe one day I'll try again and upload another video about digital art sometime. People really didn't care about my last one, but hopefully that changes one day. I'll give it another shot next year. Also, maybe you're wondering uh, how much of the video is still left, it's, it's just paper? How much is there to talk about with just paper? <laughs> oh well. This is the most important paper I have, manuscript paper. You absolutely need this when you want to draw manga the traditional way. If you would use ink on regular printer paper, it would completely bleed out. Same goes for screen toes. <laughs> screen toes? <laughs> yeah, you also can't use screen tones on regular printer paper because it's not sturdy enough, so it's gonna get cut. Manuscript paper, on the other hand, is thicker, more forgiving, and it has these guides for you to use while paneling your manga pages. But I do not use this kind of paper when it comes to coloring. That's something I'm doing with... Yeah, for example, with special marker paper. I know some people say you need special marker papers, some say you don't. I think personally your regular printer paper is just unsuitable for this because it sucks all of the ink out of your marker and it also bleeds out when drawing on it with markers. I also think colored pencils also work a lot better on marker paper. That's just my opinion though. You don't necessarily need it. Okay, this is gonna get interesting because watercolor paper is a whole topic for itself. I have cold pressed paper, hot pressed paper, a four sized, a five sized, a three sized and many more. So some paper has a bit more texture, others are more smooth, some are more pricier, some are not and so on. Just to make things simple, I'm almost always using hot pressed paper in A3 or A4 sizes. Hot pressed is far more expensive, but like I said, I'm printing art books with my artworks. And with these books, I want to have smooth results and you only get smooth results with, well, smooth hot pressed paper. And for more details about watercolor paper, uh, yeah, you already know there's a watercolor video on my channel, so let's move on. Maybe you already saw me draw on Shikishi, they are basically a Japanese autograph boards. There are a lot of Japanese people that just tend to sign them and call it a day, but among artists it's more or less a must have to draw something on them. These boards are very solid, so you cannot copy anything with a lighting table or something, so everything you're drawing on them is 100% unique. And yeah, I'm aware there are some that have just prints on them, but they are a dime a dozen, so they are basically worthless to me. Like I said before, I'm mainly painting on them for raffles when I'm going to conventions, but they are also pretty cool birthday gifts, you know, since they look so fancy. And they don't only look fancy, but they are fancy, because these things are also pretty expensive. But since they are only meant for special occasions, well, I think it's worth the cost. I also have sketchbooks, one with regular paper and one with watercolor paper. I only ever use them to test stuff out or to practice and I can't repeat myself enough, sketchbooks are always worth it. I only started painting with watercolor very recently, so now I can flip through the pages and track the progress I've made thus far. And I think that's actually a very nice thing to have. And yeah, other than that, I have stuff 
like my pencil case. Yeah, which- Okay, look, I have tons of other stuff I could talk about, but why would I waste your and my time by talking about my soldering iron or my exacto knife? I think you got the gist of the most important art supplies by now. Also, there's something I wanted to mention before this video ends. A little advice, maybe for all of you <laughs> who are still watching. Believe me, I know how it feels to go to work and not earn a lot of money from that. I've been there and of course you're maybe feeling bad for spending money on things like art supplies. I totally know this might sound privileged when I'm saying this, but don't feel bad if you treat yourself to something you saved up money for. All of my art supplies might sound expensive, I did the math and I ended up spending over a thousand dollars by now. But this is a hobby and hobbies tend to be expensive sometimes. Someone who likes to play golf might spend this kind of money that I needed for literal decades now within a year or so. And after all, I didn't buy all of this all at once. I went to work, I saved up and I gradually improved my art supplies that way. And that's something I would suggest you do as well. Start with the bare basics and work your way up from there. Also, if you still need some more advice, I mean, just leave a comment. I have some really cool people in my community that are glad to help you out if you still need some advice or tips when it comes to your art supplies. Now, that was a different video for a change, but rest assured, I'll be back with another tutorial very soon. Until then, see ya guys. My name's been Marcel, and I'm looking forward to see you in my next video.